chat this afternoon is news that the BBC staff have attended a course called The Art of Interrupting Gracefully. Sadly, regular viewers of this show will know that none of us have been on that course. <laughs> <laughs> but the women happily interrupting your afternoon with me, Kate Thornton, today are Linda Bellingham, Carol McGiffin and Denise Wells. <laughs> To beat the Monday blues is the actor whose character is harboring a junkie deep in debt from gambling and is now at the mercy of a gangster. See, girls, things ain't so bad. Yes. Mm. Yes, it's Taggart star John Mickey. And fresh from last night's Dancing on Ice action, it's the one and only Emma Bunton. <laughs> We're going to be catching up with both of them a little later, but first of all, Denzi, you're still flying the flag for the Nanas. Nanas on ice! I, do, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I was really, I was really surprised last night. I was telling the, the, the audience before because I did try to act it through because I thought that they had been saying about me being an actress and therefore I should put more into it. So I did try to do serene and sophisticated, which, you know, as I said, doesn't come that naturally to me. But, uh, oh, I cringe a lot. I go, oh, you look lovely. Oh, you look nice. you look and look, really that's... Nice. These well, are... I did it on my own. It was a nice little dress. Those, honestly, that costume department are just beyond belief that the, the detail that goes into them. Oh, there she goes, Nana. Is, is, uh, this right. is one of your required elements, yeah? Your skills. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I got marked. I thank you. <laughs> I did. I got marked quite. I got marked quite well on my on my jump and on, on, on my step sequence. But you know, as a performer, when you come off, you don't focus on the things you did right. It's the things you did wrong. And I did have to do this this sort of roll up lift where I was meant to then be jerked up even higher and get my knee onto Matt's shoulder, which we'd done, of course, loads in rehearsals. But I ended up being sort of halfway down his back. So then trying to turn my face into this was meant to happen and this could. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't know this. That's the thing you see, and that's what that's what skaters do. They say nobody knew that routine, yeah. so nobody mm. knew that. But I can't tell you how chuffed I was because although the public vote, thankfully and so grateful to them, have got me through this far, not really the judges' votes, it was nice to stand there and be and be complimented for once, because I have been With I have been score. working on relatively With high the, score. Yeah, for and, you. If, and if I'd and if I'd done that <laughs> plum and spin, yeah, um, high score for me. I didn't hear what you said there. What did you say? Relatively. <laughs> no, oh, relatively. Anyway, high score for you. Amazon a little yeah, easier. absolutely. But, but it was um, uh, it was well because that's enough for you now. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, talk about me again. Sorry, I don't <laughs> Well, this is a subject close to your heart. Uh, the UK is uh, trying to tackle the rise in alcohol-related deaths. <laughs> <laughs> the government wants to impose a minimum price per unit, forcing drinkers to pay over 20 pence per unit for lager and wine. However, leading medical experts have suggested that this doesn't go far enough, saying the minimum price should be set at 50 pence per unit, uh, which they argue will help to save around 250,000 lives in the next 20 years. So this means that a pint of average average strength at supermarket lager containing two units, which currently cost just 29 pence, would cost at least a pound. So it's quite a steep rise. Uh, so what do you think, ladies? Is this proposal the right way forward? No. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I just think it's another one of these, what should we do now? Let's... First of all, you know, you're highly suspicious about where suspicious about where the money's going. Well, to the you know, we yeah. all know, you know, that we need the money, they need the money. I worry that people who are serious drinkers, they will just take it out of their children's money for their food. I mean, I've seen people say, oh, you know, I've got no money, but they managed to buy 20 fags and a bottle of scotch. Um, and I, I just think we should be tackling the root problem of why young people it is, really, isn't it? They've, they've honed in on 250,000 people, which is a small amount of people, actually, in the great scheme of things. Well, no, actually, and if people want to die of at... drink, you know... I'd like well, to know how they know that. And the way they say the headline was 250,000 people will die yeah. from boozing. How can they possibly know that? Well, they just based on figures out to scare people based on so they can put the tax up on it. Based on uh, the average uh, number of deaths that are related back to alcohol at the moment and predicted rises in drinking patterns etc yeah. i mean let's be honest there's there are a lot of uh, drink related accidents always makes me laugh now i've stopped but all the times i fell over <laughs> and, <laughs> and sprained my ankle and i went oh i sprained my ankle and if somebody said to me how did you do that oh, well i was drunk i would i never owned up to it so i mean that we, of course it's not good to drink. Of course it can kill you. Smoking kills you. The point is, by raising the money, putting I, it's not enough. They should be worrying about the behaviour of the people. Let's have the people off the streets. Drunk and disorderly used to be a crime. Mm. <laughs> 
he still is. He's just not enforced yeah, as much. Don't enforce it no, they don't. Well. I mean, you, they, what they're using here as a fallback argument is look at how, what the smoking ban's done and the way we tax cigarettes. And that's really been yeah. a deterrent to people. It's the smoking the ban, not the fact that they. Of course, it has. Of course, it has hit people in the pocket, smokers. But I mean, a bit like you say, people will always find the money to have. You know, and some some people have got rubbish lives, so you can't blame them for finding the money to buy a bottle of scotch and a packet of fags. In many, many, you know, instances. Well, you, but I think it was more. I think it was more. I think it's more the smoking ban that is that has made people give up but smoking also, rather than Dennis, the money. There's a very different argument between smoking and drinking. Smoking, we know, it doesn't matter if you smoke one cigarette or a hundred, uh, it's bad for you. It's, it's not good. You can drink in moderation and it not to damage your health. Mm. So why are the people that can exercise moderate drinking, um, you all know, being, I, I, I consider myself yeah. to be yes. one, yes. be penalised yeah. and have their alcohol hiked up three times uh, the cost <coughs> that it is now to cover a small majority that just can't Handle their drink. Can't yeah, handle also, themselves. Kate, also, Kate, this, you know, this does, um, it, it hurts really the poorest people. You know, that's it. You know, there's a lot of people who can afford to spend £10 on a bottle of wine, but a lot of people can't. And that's why, that's why people don't go out. You know, that's why people do drink at home. You know, that's why they go to the supermarket and buy cheap beer. I don't blame them. You know, some that's people. It's yeah. people's pleasure. It's some people's little pleasure. They're, they're not, not out the people, on the streets no. causing havoc. Exactly, and I, um, I think they've targeted whether they've got this two hundred and fifty thousand. But you know, a Saturday night, there are you know gangs of people going around, going out just you know who drink a bottle of vodka. A young eighteen-year-old drinks other, a bottle of vodka countries countries before they go around. Talking about it. In other but countries, it doesn't tend to lead to the thuggery and the violence that it, that, that, okay, that so, it does so in what, our country. What, can the, what the government are saying is, we've got a problem. This is a drain on resources. This is unacceptable behaviour. People are dying. Unnecessarily, what are the government to do if they don't? Well, why just do they then do 24 the hour? Why do they then do 24 hour Drinking. opening? Exactly. I have to say, my dad never found one. It doesn't, I go there it doesn't find actually them exist. Hours. Exactly, it doesn't really exist. I, I don't think look. hiking up the price yeah. isn't going to make the slightest bit of difference. There are countries that have alcohol like you know twice the price that we pay for it and we pay a lot for it i think yeah. we're like fourth in the league or something for the most expensive booze but it doesn't make any difference you know in countries where it's really restricted say um some scandinavian countries where the government owns all the off license they're well, yeah, only open for like three freedom. hours a day they've got a really high incidence of alcoholism yeah. so it doesn't make any difference people want to drink they will drink i blame the weather <laughs> <laughs> Sunny, you don't need to get drunk, do you? Just kind of. Oh, I don't know. When the sun's out, I think we'll have a drink. <laughs> well, let us know what you think. Remember, we're always open to hear your discussions. We wax lyrical all day, but you can make sure that your voice is heard too. Uh, go to the website, itv.com forward slash loose women, or email us loose.women at itv.com, or you can go to our Facebook and Twitter pages. We could be reading out your comments if they're in before 1.15 today. That's the 21st of February. Okay, we're off for uh, a brink. A brink? <laughs> a break? A drink. Oh, he fancies a drink. But when we return, Campbell. Ever benefit a marriage? Find out in two.